Hi everyone, um, a warm welcome to the first event of Manchester Fashion Institute's digital showcase, What's Next for the Class of 2020. For those of you who may know me, my name is Kieran Gobin and I'm a senior lecturer on BA Fashion, situated in the art school um, here at MMU. Uh, and I also hold the role of head of atelier at London menswear label Martine Rose. Uh, we're brought together today for the first panel discussion of the week at a time that is difficult for us all in creative industries and in fashion education. The way we work and how we work seems to be changing on a daily basis, and we're all being challenged to adapt creatively, quickly and responsibly to a global pandemic that could shift the foundations of our industry and businesses. For the graduating classes that are attending today, you might be unsure of what this means for you and for your upcoming future. But what I'd like to say is, is that you're not alone. And what you should remember is that with change comes amazing opportunities and an unknown future requires bravery and courage, which can be one of the brightest and biggest driving forces of creativity in times like this. And speaking of bravery, I'm delighted to introduce one of the bravest people I know, my dear friend and creative director, Martine Rose, and also uh, my insanely talented and brilliant friends from the label. Martine has built what is known and referred to from the fashion press as one of the most uh, progressive, exciting and influential menswear brands today. She leads and directs her team to think progressively and to be thought provoking and teaches us to apply a creative and inquisitive approach to everything we do. Today I'm talking with the team about their ways of working and how they're adapting and keeping authenticity at the centre of their work. And I guess, Martine, um, could you kick off the introductions if you wouldn't mind? Oh, thanks so much for that lovely introduction, Kieran. No Hi everyone, my name is Martine Rose and I'm a menswear designer based in London. Um, Shawnee? Um, my name's Shawnee and I'm a also a menswear designer and I am the main designer here at Martin and I'm, yeah I'm sort of responsible for doing all things under that so collaboration for online design. Excellent. Uh, Nika? Hello um, I am business operations director at Martin Rose and I am responsible for a whole variety of things so making sure that we uh, we're supposed to be financially in the label. Um, I work with distribution, I work with our sales team, I work with our econ team, so it's a very fun and diverse role. Harry. Hi everyone, um, I'm Harry and I work as the product developer for Martine Rose, which basically involves working super closely with design to um, fulfill everything they want to do, sourcing materials, working closely with the factories, um, and liaising with our patent, wonderful patent team here to get those things done and then handing over through to production um, so that they have all the relevant information they need to go forward. Amazing. Thanks, Har. And uh, Lewis. Hi, um, I'm Lewis. I'm production coordinator at Martins. Um, so I work with, um, well, I work with the product towards the end, um, well, towards the end of when Martine and development will then go and do the research for the next season. So I make sure that the production's ready and gone to a hopefully successful like timeline so it gets into the stores when it should do. So then it like the show that you've just seen will then six months later go into store. Um, so I went to, I did an art foundation, I did um, a fashion degree at Middlesex University and then after that I stopped, I interned a little bit but I interned for magazines but I hated styling, I found it really hard because I hate the element of performance was really, I found really challenging. So um, whilst in interning at Arena I set up a label with Tam. Uh, who's uh, the stylist that I work with and it was called LMNOP and I did that for 
uh, five seasons and it was actually quite successful. But what that did um, is when I, when I, when we closed it down, it gave me a template of which to base this label on now. And I started it in, that in 2007 and it was quite a different landscape to what it is now. Menswear, um, I was mad to do menswear basically because it was, it didn't really exist as a thing. Yeah. And so my first, uh, my first show, I was working in a bar, I was working in a member's bar in Soho and I got on really well with the owner. And so he asked me, um, I, no, I asked him if I could borrow the club. He gave me the whole club. <laughs> and I, I convinced all of my friends to sort of come down, some of who were in the industry already. And so that was the first one, but it was like, um, and then after that, men's were start, there were a few of us started popping up, like uh, Christopher Shannon and Lou Dalton and stuff. They started, and Nasir, we started cropping up. So we couldn't no longer be ignored so then they they tap they did a menswear day at the end of women's fashion week yeah but you know but the budgets weren't available there weren't really buy there wasn't like buyers buying in the same way so it was like a really expensive hobby for 10 years basically it was it was uh yeah it was a very different it was a very different landscape eventually we got obviously our own fashion week which is, um, I guess, closer to what it is now. But um, yeah, it's been it's just, yeah, it's been a challenge. Yeah, it's an, inter- well, it's an interesting story and a, a really brilliant story, but a long, a long, I guess, 10, 11 year story for yourself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, I guess to the team, um, when did you start at the label, and what was your journey to there, to where you are now? Um, Harry, if you wanted to kick off. Um, so I actually met Martine over the summer coming to do a bit of an internship. So for all those people who think that interns get discarded, um, <laughs> it's just not true. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where I started. And then I went back to university and then met Martine again in Paris for a period and just built a bit of a relationship there. So I think it's really important that any relationships you're forming, just to like keep in touch with those people. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, when I graduated, Martin very kindly offered me a job um, doing design on the Napa collaboration that maybe you've seen or haven't. Um, so I did that for a year and I probably wasn't the most successful period of my work and then that kind of came to an end and Martin offered me a new position in product development, which wasn't kind of the position I'd ever thought I would want to do, but I'm a super process methodical person. And those are the kind of interest things I'm interested in within clothing and fashion, how you get things made, where things are made, materials. Um, so I took on the opportunity and yeah, I haven't really looked back since, to be honest. Great, that's nice, brilliant. Um, Sean, Shawnee. Yeah. So, uh, similar to Harry, I actually met Martin in 2014 and I, I interned for a bit just before Martin had our, our little girl. And then after that, I went away for a period and worked for Christopher Shannon and different people actually doing pattern cutting. Um, just trying to get, like scope out a way into the industry. Uh, but... I sort of, that all came to a bit of a pause and I was working in a bar and then Martine called me one day and asked if I wanted to come back. And that was maybe, that was still in 2014. It all happened. I remember that call. Yeah. (laughs) I've been here ever since. I've been here ever since. And my my role was sort of changed slightly. At the beginning, I was sort of a studio manager, and I use that term really loosely because I don't know if I was doing much managing. I think we were all <laughs> surviving at that point. But um, now, yeah, now it's sort of grown more into design and doing collaborations and stuff. But yeah, Amazing. that's sort of where I am now. Brilliant, thank you. And Nika? Um, I've been working in the industry for a little while, so I met Martine <clears throat> not that long ago, only about three years ago, 2017, I joined. Um, and initially I joined as a studio director, which um, I guess is a very broad term for a lot of different things that I, um, that I did at the time. And that position grew quite rapidly to look after 
our accounts, to look after our wholesale, to look after our distribution. And um, I basically find myself being the go-to person whenever uh, a non-creative issue pops up. <laughs> it normally lands on my table, which is, um, which is incredibly exciting, it keeps me on my, on my toes. And incredibly important through the whole thing because it keeps everything absolutely ticking um, and everyone really happy. So it's, it's absolutely vital. Um, and Lewis? Um, so I started, I did my foundation at uh, Manchester School of Art um, and then I went on to do the BA course. Um, and then I kind of, I did a couple of internships and then I had a bit of a pause. I went back home for a bit. Um, and then I met Kieran <laughs> um, through one of my tutors after I'd graduated and, and, and been out of uni for, for a while. Um, and then I became a, a pattern cutting intern here at Martins, um, working under Kieran. Which you were fabulous at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was doing pattern cutting for a while. And then... Um, Jane, my old manager, um, who was head of production, needed an intern. So then I went over to production. Um, and kind of production is where I kind of found, like, found my forte in, this, in a way. I, I kind of liked how, <clears throat> well, it's how chatty you can be with all the factories and, you know, you, you get to go speak to them and see them a lot. And, help them with the product and make sure that it's it's being kicked off like right right at the beginning um and then yeah um i then became a junior took on more responsibilities and then my manager left and then i kind of took on her responsibilities and this is where i am right now um so yeah it kind of it happened quite slowly but eventually i got to a position that i'm actually proud to say I do and and like love doing so brilliant yeah. oh thanks Lewis um that's really great thanks guys um so uh one little question for everybody I guess if you could describe your journey from the beginning I don't know when you want to think the beginning of this is but um also uh the journey in one word what would it be for you Shawnee I can see you really oh, looking at the sky there. <laughs> um, this is quite generic, but I'd just say inspiring. I'm, I'm constantly inspired, and that's actually, that's as a designer, that's what you want to be. Mm. I think when you stop being inspired by, you know, anything and everything, then you should just stop designing. Mm. You know, and I feel like that's, I'm constantly inspired, yeah. So inspiring. Amazing. And I think also, you know. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly at the label, I mean, inspiration comes from loads of sources, different yeah. sources and varied sources. Yeah. So I think there's something really, really beautiful about like music or film or, or the man who's got, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Martine? Oh, one word. Um, I, this is really cheesy as well. I'm going to up Shauna's cheesiness and I'm going to say lucky, I think. Yeah. I think I, I, I felt overwhelmingly lucky a lot of the time because, like, uh, it's just a privilege. It's a privilege to wake up. And it's, this is not to, like, underestimate how hard it is and how long it's been. I mean, I worked in a bar until I was 34, you know, and that's fine. <laughs> you know, it's fine. It's hard. It's really hard because you're like really tired, but it's fine. Like I needed that time. And despite all of that stuff all the way through it, I think, you know, you know, Kieran and I, we were working really closely together from pretty much the beginning. And, I, and all through that time, I just felt really lucky, even when I was really tired and all of that stuff. I feel really lucky now. I feel really lucky working with the people that I work with. I feel really lucky researching the stuff that I research. You know, I, I would say that is that is the biggest feeling I have. Yeah, no, it's 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 an amazing sort of uh, opportunity, but yeah, it comes with a lot <laughs> of hard work and a lot of a lot of mistakes as well, and and and, and trial and error and all those things, which yeah. is part of the creative process, I guess. Um. 
Harry? Yeah, I think maybe mine is similar to Shawnee's in that it's perhaps I'd say curiosity. And I've always wanted to find out about things. And even with Martine, I remember when being at university and thinking what goes on there, looking at these amazing shots that were coming out from, I think the Autumn Winter 13 collection on the turntables and just being like, I want to be a part of that movement and what's going on there. So I think, th and that speaks volumes to that, but also to the detail of what I do in my day-to-day -day role about dissecting a garment and working out those components that make it up and how they come together. Ooh. Nika? Um, I have two words. <laughs> it's either unexpected or diverse. So it's sort of at the same time, um, very different um, because I did a degree in fashion design, yet I never worked as a fashion designer. In fact, fortunately, my um, degree showed me how bad I was <laughs> at designing, but also showed me that there were so many other things that I was actually more interested in. And to anyone out there who is a bit of a control freak, maybe a little bit nosy <laughs> like I am, um, being in an operational position, in fact, gives you so much knowledge in so many different areas of the business. It is a very industrial knowledge. It's um, a lot of transferable skills at the same time. So for me, I'd say it's been incredibly diverse and, and unexpected um, <laughs> for someone who graduated with a design degree and never worked as a designer. Actually, probably thank God for the greater, <laughs> greater population. <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Nika. And, and Lewis? Um, <clears throat> without this sounding negative, but I would say it's been like a frustrating journey for, for some part of it because it feels like a lot of doors get slammed in your face. But at the same time, if they'd not been shot on me, it wouldn't have directed me into the, the position that I'm in now. So yeah. it's helped me. So it's like, it's just advice for people to not get like, you know, don't be down about not getting that internship or, you know, cause there's, there's so many other things you can go and do, you know, there's so many other things you can apply for. It's just, don't be, I guess, so like, tunnel vision to one thing just be open to a lot of things because there is so much more in the industry than you actually think mm -hmm. like i didn't realize production was a thing until i came to martin rose and now this is what i do it's totally that and i think fashion education generally um, and what labels need is the need of what a label um sort of needs to fill i guess and what we teach i guess um and speaking as an educator but also you know uh, understanding what um, the skills that are required from a label. Um, I guess um, we're in a sort of place where it's, it's sort of in a flux of change. Um, but when you do sort of, I guess, a fashion design degree, also there's other degrees, um, people who are in the chat who are doing buying and merch, um, sort of uh, women's wear, sports wear, textiles. Um, there is a place, but I think when you, t when you study design, there is um, a sort of more horizontal thinking rather than a linear way of thinking um, in the sense that uh, it can, your knowledge can be applied to lots of different things. And I think it's, I think it's really important to get yourself out there and uh, do an internship and, and find out how that works and then figure out what those jobs entail, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if you would agree. Definitely. I, d I, think, I think, well, on my course anyway, which was obviously 100 years ago, we didn't know much uh, I didn't know any other jobs were available apart from designer. I had no, uh, you know, yeah. And perhaps if I, perhaps if I had, and I didn't, re I didn't really intern either. So I, I really left it quite narrow for myself. <laughs> Maybe I would have been something else, but um, yeah, yeah. I would, I would say that that's really good advice. There is, there are a billion jobs in the fashion industry. Don't just think about being a, des a designer because there are so many other ways like, if you're really creative, like Harry was saying, like, you know, the product development is, is such an essential sort of part of the design process. Without that, you, you can't design, do you know? You know, so you, until you know what washes to do on, you know, the techniques that you can do on jersey and denim, or, you know what I mean? Or how you can get this finish on a button. It's, that's that sort of everything. And if like, if like Nico was saying, if you're more sort of like organized and, you know, into nosy. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah there's a lot of, like loads of jobs in that you know doing production doing i don't know yeah yeah, Just yeah there's, a, there's a whole plethora of things surrounding sort of a massive industry in that sense um i was going to also ask then um how do you sort of approach your work i guess individually or um within your role um and in one approach i guess something traditional that you've always known and done and then also how has the sort of current time of it changed the way you work with what's happening right now in light of uh sort of the pandemic etc i think you're actually even though this feels like it feels i'm sure it feels like a massive ball lake and a bit deflating for you to graduate in this time I think <laughs> <laughs> I think you are actually great at graduating in a really, really exciting time. It's, it's a time of such unbelievable change and the industry is going to change beyond recognition, I think. And I think you're right at the start of it. And I, I would just, I don't know, I, I, just, I just think it's a really exciting, contrary to what it probably feels like, quite na like now um i just think it's um i just think there's immense scope for you to make it what you want it to be right now i think that's really empowering um yeah. I, I graduated in the middle of the recession so it would have been like 2008 2009 yeah. not 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 saying that it's the same but it was the sort of same sentiments that there was nobody hiring nothing going on there was no money being generated in the country or you know yeah. um and it was all kind of well, like that's sorry, it yeah and um it was just all a bit of a free-for-all so you sort of had to just do jobs and take on work that you wouldn't automatically so i guess you're forced into a way of working that actually might set the president for the next sort of couple of years or at least a decade or the future of the industry that we're going to be working in yeah it's not just affecting the creative process. What I see from a commercial standpoint, whilst talking to buyers, talking to store owners, talking to the sales team, talking to you know all of our distribution channels, down to like talking to our warehouse, you see such change happening and people really being um, super adaptive to this change, which is incredible. From what we've seen in the past, the fashion sort of industrial structure has been so rigid and seeing that sort of crack and break down a little bit is actually incredible. It's, it's so inspiring to, uh, you know, it starts at the creative front, but then to see that kind of carry over to the end customer, it's, it's amazing. That's it. I think in, in so many ways, the way that we have worked, even the way that we have worked for the past year is, is probably, we're going to have to change. So in a way we're going to be asking you, I think you guys are the change makers really. Do you know, because you can adapt much faster. You're the fastest. You can adopt a completely new way of working. The way people buy, the way people shop, the way people consume fashion is so different now, even from, even from the start of, of the lockdown probably until now, even in such a short time. Yeah, totally. Um, in light of that as well, like, I think it's really important. I want to touch upon the idea of collaboration and creativity and collaboration. Because I think a lot of these things and maybe possibly, I mean, I was a student a long time ago, um, but it can sometimes feel like uh, a quite a, a seldom or maybe a bit of a lonely creative place where you're really trying to push an idea and you, you basically have to be everybody within the team. You have to be your own designer, your own maker, your own cutter, um, and, and, and sourcing your own um, fabrics, etc. Um, also within sort of the consumer idea of it, if you want to put it out, you then have to um, sort of train yourself into sort of how that's uh, put out there in the right way, with the right tone. So um, how important is sort of collaboration uh, to Martine Rose um, and how you guys function? Shawnee, do you want to actually maybe try to talk? Because you work on actually a couple of co collabs that we've we've done in the past. Yeah, I think um, we were always. I went to Edinburgh College of Art, and we were always encouraged at Edinburgh to collaborate with different departments. And I used to find it frustrating because fashion students never wanted to collaborate ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if you got asked to collaborate with textiles, it was like, oh no, like oh my god, no one's touching my designs. But um, it was actually, I collaborated with a jewellery designer um, throughout my final year, and it was amazing. 
it's so good because it just allowed you to bounce ideas off of someone yeah. and, it, and it made me question what I was researching, what she was researching and I actually made for a much better collection and that's something that I've continued to, has stayed with me into my work that, you know, it's, it's good, it's good to like work with other people and work through ideas because it actually makes for better ideas because there's someone questioning you and questioning your approach or even just like maybe giving you more resources to go and look at and I think throughout Martine, my time at Martine we've continued to collaborate with some amazing people who are real specialists and I think that's a real important thing to remember is you know there are people you really need the people out there who just focus on denim you know and or they just focus on eyewear and these real craftsmen of the like with real yeah, totally. you shouldn't disregard that because you yeah. can learn from them and they also like they will make you a better designer totally you know? it's, that, it's, it's that um accumulation of knowledge as well yeah, exactly. so it's, in one thing i remember sort of uh, graduating uh well this was the early 2000s and it was sort of like the the youth was sort of um, heralded as a new idea and freshness yeah. but actually as I've sort of gone on it I feel that there is accumulation of knowledge yeah. actually really really does help and also understanding your references and researching and actually um, having a real interest in what your research ideas are yeah. um, all your outputs is I guess plays back into the idea of what the label does in a sense of authenticity yeah yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, nice. And um, I was also going to ask, um, in sort of, uh, in a way, um, in sort of the vision of the future, and I guess the vision of the future of the industry is, is still not a question mark, but we have models that we're working with. And, and I guess in any industry, in any business, all you can refer to is, uh, sort of models, um, currency, cultural currency, um, and also a standing within a landscape of other contemporaries or peers. So, sort of in the in the dawn of a new age of what we're going to, um, and and in creative industries, is there an ability to rewrite the rule book, or um, like what sort of part of the industry would you want to keep intact, and actually what would you like to change for the better? Um, old question. Yeah, wow, that's a big old question. I think we answered that a bit. What's that? Well, I think, I just think, I just think it's like a time of unprecedented change on every, on every level, on like a creative level, a, I don't know, societal level, it's, it's an amazing shift. Um, and maybe don't be, don't like feel rushed and a, going into this like the fashion structure that you know you know so like start going an under internship at a label then another, then doing another internship like you can try a few things and right now you actually have time to maybe take a break like do a bit of uh, ongoing research you don't that's just really important as well Shawnee. Yeah. yeah i think that's i think that's really vital actually and right now um in lockdown we've been allowed to take our time and i think that's that's been the 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 luckiest thing that we've we've came out of this with is just having a bit more headspace. Yeah. That's really important. Yeah. Definitely. Nika, is there anything from sort of your side of the business that uh the business side of the business mm -hmm. <laughs> that uh you sort of would like to preserve or change or could be improved maybe uh through this sort of idea of we're looking at different cycles within fashion now that sort of I guess the archaic way and the model, the old fashioned model, if I'm not mistaken, was sort of that 50s showcase of fashion through spring, summer and autumn, winter in salons in, in Paris. And it's funny how that has stayed as the sort of model all the way through with the additions of pre's and falls and um, sort of resort collections and cruise collections. How do you think that sort of buying model and, and, and maybe the consumer aspect of that might uh, be affected or uh, could change into something totally different? Well, I think from where we are, because we are still a relatively quite a small business and most of our 
product is sold via wholesale and has been until very recently. So for us, I think what's been a real positive is that real sense of community um, and support came from you know people that you never would have expected it from in in the industry and it's been really great to see how flexible and helpful everyone has been so we had to review our calendar you know we had to change some dates and um our buyers and our stores have only grown more excited with what it is that we wanted to do so it's um that's definitely so that sense of community you know the sense that everyone is in the same boat that's something that i really hope stays and i feel like it has been that way um especially it's it's more visible probably from um, sort of a small business perspective um but that sense of community i really hope remains um throughout these new changes right lou how's that sort of affected your job how do you feel like it might go forward i mean in in your side of things it's uh, it's not the end of line because the end of line i guess it goes straight to the consumer but you're on the delivery of the actual products once it's sort of been done. So there's lots of processes that go into, I guess, production in uh, not just doing one sample, but thousands of them. How is the control um, can be uh, in this era and this time that we're in um, difficult for you and, and, and can anything get easier? I mean, <clears throat> COVID-19 has definitely put me very behind on my critical path. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I don't think anything for me like for the way I work will really change that much it's just made me like from I don't know from being in lockdown I now know how to work an Excel spreadsheet better than the next person because I've had to like had the time that I wouldn't have had if COVID hadn't happened like I wouldn't have been able to like really go into debt into the production to like really realize where all the, the fabric was coming from, delivery dates, mm. and we'll get that into a very, very well organized like schedule. Yeah, um, totally, that makes total sense. Yeah. Um, there's also the idea of, I guess, uh, dissemination and showing your work and how to show your work. I mean, platforms, um, obviously, I feel like everything or there are ways of showing, i.e. digitally, or um, I don't know if there's, I haven't, I haven't heard of any or seen any um, interesting sort of more analog ways of showing um, right now, but we've just come through sort of London Fashion Week uh, digital, um, and then we're gearing up. So the cycles, I guess the wheel hasn't stopped, but um, how do you think um, showing work um, in a digital way um is good um do you think it can be done correctly or is there anything that uh, maybe a graduate who's trying to get their work out now I just, I, I just think the world is your oyster i think that there's such you have such a thing in the palm of your hand which is this sort of like showing digitally but you should use it not just you should use it till it's like max you know you should still be guerrilla about how you show, when you show, what you show, and all of that sort of stuff. And you should still find alternatives, but you it but you have this amazing tool at your disposal now, which is like this digital this ability to show digitally. So I just think don't think in a formulaic way, you know, about just because, you know, I don't know, I just I just think that you have um every opportunity to treat this I guess new new way of showing um and treat it like you would analog so I guess Martin we um you know some of our um you know the label historically has shown only digital lookbooks I guess so yeah. you have uh, photographs and yeah. that was sort of exclusives with days and whatnot um and they took that on as a sort of digital way of working but digital back then was still just pictures digitally shown on a website but it, it could be have a different I guess the meaning can change in, in, in how you want it to show and the curation of it yeah I mean all everything is digital now anyway do you know what I mean all of the all of the con all of the content is is the stuff that lasts for ages so I guess you have to start thinking about that in terms of like oh that's quite hard <laughs> 
quite hardcore what's, what's going to stay for life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. That's it. You need to start thinking of like that as opposed to the, sh the show, which is only a handful of people see. Yeah. You know, but that's, I, don't, I, I find that quite inspiring. It's new. It feels like a new way of looking at the, at the whole thing. Essentially, a show is just looking at the industry. It's just quite inward looking in that it just, it shows it to a very few um, sort of lucky people in the industry and then it sort of like trickles out. But I don't think that that's the future. I think the future is showing it in a, in a, in a much broader way. And I guess, like you say, the scope of it. Yeah. Like one of those days where, like, people would go to Paris and feel quietly, exactly. you know, <laughs> um, there's only, like, 20 people invited to a private show. The, yeah. the, the scope of it um, can be enormous. Absolutely and, enormous, and really yeah. Huge, like, global. Um, and I guess yeah. there's tools, tools to help you sort of propel and launch yourself in a different yeah. way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of show, actually, um, it's quite interesting because um, I feel, and personally with the label, I feel um, there's something really beautiful about coming together um, to put a show on, I guess, or show the work. Um, and in that, there are so many different elements that go into it. And I think um, what I've learned uh, the most working at the label is that um, it's really not the clothes or just the clothes. It can be everything that creates um, and enforces the idea um, that is coming across. So for you guys, which um, might, be, might be same answers, but what, what's been your favorite show and sort of why, really? <laughs> Silence. I think, um... I think I'm um, the one we're working on now, but I can't, I'm not allowed to talk about what. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The idea of it anyway. Yeah, I know the idea of it, right? Let's hope it. Is. <laughs> um, I quite like, oh, I, I just quite like the market. Oh, um, Ultimate 17. Yeah, Ultimate Yeah, that was lovely. Because it was the first time that we used like, a location like that you know and that, that's when we got our confidence we found our feet then because then we were like oh yeah we can do this and anywhere <laughs> but then it also um instilled a place of sort of home because the studio was literally 100 meters away down the road back then exactly. so it was somewhere that we passed every day and it was it was there and it was for the community as well and for the community of people that worked in there so i think that's also really important um and i think um with your work martin it's always been sort of the idea that it's larger and it's bigger than just clothes. There's, there's, and it's bigger than just the message actually. Mm. It's the idea of community and i.e. being geographically maybe London or the UK or even the world as it grows. But um, it's the idea of inclusive and if you can do something with the work that you do, either if you see it as your practice or an artistry practice or fashion in this case, um, the idea of trying to want to use something um, or the, the platform or the power that you have for good or, or, or to help others. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, which is good. Uh, Shawnee, I'm really intrigued about yours actually. <laughs> I mean, I think definitely, I think Martine highlighted a good, a good point there that when we done the market show, it was the first time we sort of highlighted this connection between what we were inspired by which is just like everyday people and like what we all suck what most people would just pass by in the street we sort of tend to focus on and maybe take details and build these characters and that was the first time we actually done that but we could showcase it to normal people you know it wasn't this like fashion crowd and that felt really refreshing to have these like editors and buyers and amongst just these normal folk just like your mum your dad your brother your sister it was and that's exactly who you want to showcase it to so I feel that maybe spring summer 19 which was in a cul-de-sac in Kentish town yeah that's my favorite my favorite <laughs> was of just the uh, when you looked around and just to see these smiling faces and people hanging out their windows that that's really what that's what I do fashion for you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's what makes me excited. You know, I'm not excited by the glossy 
floors in the white cube rooms. You know, I'm excited mm -hmm. by like the the guy you might meet in the bus that's mate wearing the Martine Rose t-shirt. That that's that's exciting. So I feel like spring summer nineteen was my was yeah. my one. No, that's lovely. Spring summer nineteen was really special. Yeah. I think it was also like to date the one of the biggest undertakings that <laughs> that we've done and it could have easily rained so it didn't so nah, but that that was a really good show because obviously they were just like next door neighbors drinking cups of tea but i remember seeing oh, a woman God. in a window picking her cat up making him making the cat watch the show and i was just like <laughs> this is really bizarre but it, but it would have been such a bizarre thing for them because you've just put a fashion show in on their, their own. Yeah. And like kids were watching it and like on their bikes and like people were just congregating at their, at their fence having a cup of tea. Yeah. Like that's what community is, you know, like going out and being able to like see every, well, just go out and see something like that and giving something back to a community that wouldn't necessarily even be aware of a fashion show or when, when the fashion shows will be and when the schedule is, you know, it was nice. Yeah, just like bring normal people it's great I, I thought it was brilliant. really beautiful oh it's really nice mm, good work um i was also going to ask um sort of um also there's question and answers uh this is to the audience in the last 10 minutes we've only got about 15 minutes left but um if you could pop your questions into the uh chat dialogue box uh we'll answer them towards the end um sort of to tie off what we've been talking about really um uh if you could uh, give yourself uh, a younger self any advice, what would it be? Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I think my answer is probably quite cliched, but I think you, everyone should learn how to fail. And you've probably been told that a hundred times, but um, yeah, really taking the things that you do wrong mm. and working out what you can do right the next time and seeing them as successes in a way because they really are yeah that's such a good one harry oh that's a good one i know he stole my one i was like that's really good one. <laughs> <laughs> nika what about you um mine is if you ever want to learn something properly go to the source like don't try and learn it through any parallel channels or middlemen or anything like that so if there is a anything that you want to master you need to learn it from the source that's what I've understood um within my years in the industry and I sort of wish I knew that earlier yeah that's a really good one actually and a really important one yeah. and again <laughs> it's authenticity to the to the core really in every part of the label and I think that's that really sounds true um <clears throat> to uh especially also it's it's funny how much of a spider web uh, when you start to think about uh, how we've sort of weaved it together and how Martine has sort of uh, made sure that everything's working there is a bit of a net in that sense and at the at the sort of heart of it there's this uh, authenticity creative love that we all share um, and that we all really really strive for so I think that's that's really awesome. Um, Lou? Um, I guess it just goes back to my my frustration that I had, don't ever just like run parallel with Harry's, you know, like so many doors are going to be closed in your face, but there's going to be so many more open because of that. And like, I can imagine Martine was so frustrated, you know, working for so long and, and literally getting nothing in return. And then all of a sudden something happens, but it's like, at the end of the day, like that's probably what's going to happen with you, you know? It, something will happen. You just got to bide your time, and then when when it's ready, jump on it <laughs> and, and don't let go. <laughs> I think that's it as well. Like I remember when I graduated, um, um, there was well, there was no design. There was there was little in terms of jobs, and then I remember somebody saying, "Oh, somebody needs a pattern cutter," and I was like, "Oh, I hate pattern cutting. I can't." <laughs> And I did um, a month for a women's wear designer, I will not mention names, <clears throat> and they um, didn't pay me at the, end of the, at the end of that month. And then my work was apparently really bad. And I was like, what? Um, but then it sort of gives you that sort of real strength and drive to really hone your craft 
and then really understand. And I didn't really know that I was like that I loved it that much I guess and the creation of something and I think that's the beauty and the idea in creation or whatever you might be doing in whichever sort of path you take within the industry which is huge at the end of the day there's a creative element which is um really important that everyone should sort of nurture and understand in that sense Shawnee what's yours your younger self a younger Shawnee self yeah um, I think mine would be don't try don't worry about shoehorning yourself into a, a structure that might not work for you. I mm -hmm. feel like at uni you're very much told about this linear way of designing and this really like traditional way of you know like sketch, work on the stand, do patterns, all of these things are really important but what you realise is sometimes that, that doesn't work for you and that's okay. So actually if you, if you don't sketch or, and you prefer to work more with existing garments, or if you actually like only work with creating your own patterns, everything is individual, and that's what makes you authentic. And so don't try and like, there's no point of trying to, you know, work on your portfolio and make it look like everyone else sees on Pinterest, because at the end of the day, that's not what people want to see. Yeah. Why you're different, and so you should just, just go with that. Amazing. Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to have a look towards the chat. So it's 10 minutes left. That's gone really fast. <laughs> I'll say that though. I just read um, one of them. We've got a couple of questions here. Um, and I'm just going to read some of them out. Nika, I think we've got the same, right? Well, yeah. Really okay. um, one of the questions um, was, um, in this moment in time, we have more time to reflect. How do we go ahead if we want to start your own business? Any advice from Martine? if she had to tell her younger self or anybody trying to start their own business right now? Um, well, I, um, I, I don't know. I like, I, I think the main thing is like, is it's a bit of what everyone said, actually. It's a bit of what Nika said, what Shawnee said, what Harry said, learn to fail, learn to accept failure. Be your authentic self. If you need to learn something, go, go and learn it. And I would add to all of those things, take your time. Do not rush. That would be the main <laughs> advice I would give everyone because it, it took me ages. It did take me ages, but I needed that time. I needed that time to figure out who I was, what I wanted to say. I, you know, I messed up a lot, but I did it behind the scene you know I, it wasn't really public I was you know I was just sort of like quietly finding my way and but at the same time I was also living I was working in a bar I was you know I was going out loads and all of that stuff feeds it it's important you have to be connected you have to be living life in order to reflect it properly and that takes time like I don't know I, I, I it's easy to look at people that have success really young or very quickly when they graduate or very, you know, whatever. And you, you sort of feel so envious. It's easy to feel that. Yeah. Um, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. It's like, it's not, it's not easy to maintain stuff when you, when you're not really sure on what you want to say or who you are really. Totally. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's really interesting, isn't it? Because it's like the idea of taking time when you're going into an industry that's so fast. So you yeah. always have to like, so, yeah, that's what that it, is. Feels, it feels like you haven't got time, but you have. You've got so much time. You've got so much time. And wait and see what happens as well. This is like a different moment that you're graduating in as well. You know what I mean? Like, find your own path in it, and that's going to also, you know, take, <laughs> take time. Amazing. Um, I've got um, a question from Anze, who has worked with us, actually. Oh. Uh, Anze, Hi, Anze. Hi. <laughs> um, for the communication students on uh, FAS um, and graduates, how important is the promotion, styling, and shows for the label? Oh my god, I mean, that's everything, that's the outward facing bit. So I think sometimes it's always like, and like we've said, it's, it's sort of like this idea that is geared towards design, but actually, no, I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, that's our marketing, right? 
um, marketing and styling and also you know i guess yeah promotion and, and, and whatnot that, it's that's the storytelling that's a set that's essential without that we can't um we can't tell our story you need you need that that's what that's our connection to the outside world that's our you know that is our communication tool it's just, it's without that there's no design really it's also the big motivator isn't it because i think obviously that gets you and Shawnee really driven and then it helps like build this yeah. idea of what we're working on in the team and um yeah absolutely yeah. okay nice um this was an interesting one actually from carl um what was the most serious personal sacrifice you've had to make while journeying your path to the future being broken since i was 34 <laughs> 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 straight up, Martin, straight yeah. in there. <laughs> forward, you know, it's hard. <laughs> Squat, you know, I don't know. That's hard. That's hard, especially when your mates have like really conventional jobs and you're always the one that can't buy drinks in the pub, that like can't go on holidays. That's such a sacrifice, can't pay for the drink. Yeah, it is. <laughs> actually, a, you know, normal yeah, thing, yeah, it's normal yeah, yeah, life, yeah. isn't it? That yeah, it really is, rather than like, the bigger things it's the small accumulation of stuff and i think we've all been there we've all done that um i don't know that was it for me i don't know what everyone else was that's fucking hard shawnee um for me i guess it's just that it's also the amount of time you have to give to it you know mm. like, yeah 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 exactly you have to dedicate so much time to get where you need to be and of course i'm from scotland so that means uh that meant a sort of relocation to london and and without sounding too sombre, but a lot of time away from my family and the people mm. that have actually moulded me into the person I am now. Yeah. And I feel like um, it's, it's always good, as much time as you put into your time in London and your career, in a sense, always always remember to go back and dip into yeah. the people who helped make you who you are anyway. Yeah. So I, I, feel, I feel like, um, yeah, time time's a big one. Time's a big one, and especially when you're learning something like this, and you're and, and you're learning uh, how to and find your voices and abilities. You can only do that with time. So yeah, it's a really it's a really important one in sort of us understanding this. Um, I guess we're we're sort of closing to the end. So the last thing um, I was going to ask you guys um, is there any sort of advice you would give uh, the class of 2020? Uh, I guess to Manchester or to the world. Um, anything, any words of encouragement, um, any warnings <laughs> <laughs> that um, you could give to uh, a new graduating class? Mm -hmm. I think just think big. I think think big. Don't think be scared. Big. Think big. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be upset if you can't pay for the flight. <laughs> yeah. it will all work out it will work out, it will work out. that's a good one actually well it, let's hope there's places to to go for a drink when we uh yeah, exactly. <laughs> when yeah. things open it might it might be absolutely all right that you have to buy a drink yeah, 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 exactly. harry what would you say i think we've touched on all of it but just persevere i think mm. the, um, the hardest working people get get there in the end yeah yeah that's true nika this is going to sound very cheesy, but um, don't let fear stop you. Just don't be afraid and just jump off that cliff. Do you know what I mean? Just, just do it. <laughs> to paraphrase a very famous brand, <laughs> <laughs> but they had something there. But um, honestly, just don't don't be afraid. And if you are afraid, just see it as a good thing because that means that you are onto something great. But don't let that fear stop you. That's really positive. That's really good, actually. I might use some of that as well, Nika, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and Lewis. I, I, I second Nika. I'm just like, <clears throat> don't, um, don't be scared to fail, because you will learn from failing, never to do it again. Um, Probably and learn that, failing, then you will succeed then, to be honest. Yeah, and that really embeds in you that for the next time you do something, you just, you'll never forget it. Like, and that's, that's what I always personally do. Like, if I've failed in something, like I, I mess up in production all the time, 
well, that's, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, shit, I can't do that. And then, <laughs> and then I find a really good way of, of reversing what I've just done. And then I know never to do it again. You know, this is like my third production on, on my mm, second, third production on my own. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, I've learned a lot, but I've learned a, a lot more from failing than I have succeeding. Um, and I feel like everybody will always say the same thing. And it's true. And it is. That's the reason why people say it a lot, because it's true. <laughs> so just don't be scared. And yeah, no, you'll be fine. Absolutely. And I think that's it, isn't it? Um, it's, I guess, asking. Asking yeah. questions. I feel like lots of people get quite scared to ask. <clears throat> yeah, don't be in scared. To, don't be things, scared to be inquisitive. Either ask if there was an opportunity or just ask really you know um and 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 try not to be afraid and if you don't know how to do something ask again <laughs> i guess because um you will you'll learn that in in a different way which is really good um so it's got three so i'm going to sort of close off um i just want to say a massive thank you uh to martine and her team to sort of uh give us an insight into uh, what the label um, is sort of about. I wish it was just a little bit longer than an hour. There's so much to cover. But um, uh, I think the insights of um, having different roles and different people within the label um, is first of all, just a great thing to see. Um, and also how much goes into the thought and the process um, and the creativity of something quite, uh, well, quite, well, I, I would biasly say, extremely exciting um and an extremely exciting place to work that's progressive and interesting so um i'd like to thank uh, martine and everybody um at the studio um for their time um and also um that's basically it. so thank you very much and thank you for everybody who came um and participated in today's talk i hope the uh, series of events continue um well over the next week um, and finally, it would be a massive congratulations from me and all the faculty at MMU uh, for the graduating class of 2020.